Mr. President, on November 18, exactly a month from now, the current law that permits uh, the funding of the government will expire. Something will have to be enacted in its place since it's clear to all of us, I believe, that we will not have passed and sent to the President all of the appropriations bills by that time. The normal procedure for enacting funding bills is for them to originate in the House of Representatives and be passed there, then they come to the Senate for consideration and get passed here. I come to the floor today to urge that before the expiration of the current continuing resolution, that is before November 18, that the House enact and send to the Senate a funding bill which extends to the end of the current fiscal year, uh, which extends funding uh, to the end of the current fiscal year, that is September 30th of 2012. My simple point is that in my view, it's irresponsible for us to continue funding the government just a few weeks at a time. Already this year, we experienced a near shutdown of the federal, a near default on the country's debt in August, a partial shutdown of the Federal Aviation Administration in August, and another near shutdown of the federal government three weeks ago because of a dispute over disaster funding. These repeated perils of Pauline scenarios have understandably shaken the confidence of Americans about their government and more particularly about this Congress. This government generated uncertainty also has real economic consequences. Federal Reserve Chairman Ben Bernanke said, and I quote, the negotiations that took place over the summer disrupted financial markets and probably the economy as well and similar events in the future could, over time, seriously jeopardize the willingness of investors around the world to hold U.S. financial assets or to make direct investments in job-creating U.S. businesses." End quote. So these are self-inflicted wounds that the economy can ill afford, and reducing the risk of them occurring in the future would provide a modicum of certainty to businesses in this country and throughout the world. Congress can readily eliminate the risk of a government shutdown during this fiscal year simply by enacting a full year continuing resolution. The sad reality is that in recent years, the Congress has more and more relied on short-term funding bills or so-called continuing resolutions to keep the government functioning while we try to reach agreement on appropriations levels. So some would ask, why are the circumstances different this year? They are different for the simple reason that we have already settled on the level of funding for the government. The Budget Control Act of 2011 that was enacted in August set the spending levels for the federal government for this year and for each of the next nine years. These spending levels were passed with large bipartisan majorities in both chambers. Here in the Senate, the vote was 74 to 26. Therefore, enacting a full year continuing resolution that sets federal spending at that level should not be controversial. We should not have to rehash the debate on spending levels every few months. Adopting a full year continuing resolution would free up valuable time in Congress to work on other legislation intended to create jobs and to help the economy. A full year continuing resolution also allows the government to operate more efficiently than it can under a series of short-term continuing resolutions. Short-term continuing resolutions make it difficult for federal agencies to enter into construction contracts, such as to build or repair roads, or to enter into long-term supply contracts that are often less expensive than short-term supply contracts. In other words, short-term continuing resolutions delay critical projects and increase the overall cost to taxpayers. 
adopting a full year continuing resolution would address both of these problems. It's clear that passing a long-term continuing resolution does nothing to preclude Congress from going ahead and passing individual appropriations bills as, they're, as they are agreed upon. Stan Collender, a respected budget expert, has written about this, and he said, I quote from an article he wrote, he said, if the tried and true procedure is used, the CR, that is the continuing resolution, will simply stop applying to the department and agencies, departments and agencies, when the separate appropriation is signed. In appropriations speak, those covered by the individual spending bill will, quote, disengage, end quote, from the CR. So the, on, the only argument that I've heard against passing a continuing resolution for the rest of the year is the argument that doing so will take away the pressure on the appropriations committees and the Congress to pass the remaining appropriations bills. That's essentially an argument uh, to, for, to force those of us in Congress to do what we ought to do, that is to pass appropriations bills. In order to do our basic we need to subject the rest of the government and the country to a series of threatened shutdowns. And especially do we need to do that at a time when we have already agreed on spending levels. I question this argument. It seems to me that both parties, Democrats and Republicans, and particularly the appropriators, both in the House and Senate, have substantial incentive to reach agreement and pass appropriations bills, whether a year-long continuing resolution has been adopted or not. And if it were true that passing a year-long continuing resolution would lessen the incentive to complete action on appropriations bills, then so be it. To my mind, the benefit from eliminating the threat of a series of government shutdowns far outweighs any disadvantage that might result from failure to pass full appropriations bills. So to me, the conclusions are clear. First, we have already, as a Congress, agreed on the spending levels for the current fiscal year. Second, we should make every effort to pass all the appropriations bills reflecting those spending levels as soon as possible. And third, that while we're making that effort to pass the appropriations bills, the responsible course is to pass a continuing resolution that extends to the end of the fiscal year. Here's a chance for us to provide at least a modest degree of predictability for the remaining 11 months of this current fiscal year. I believe we owe it to the American people to do just that. Mr. President, I yield the floor and suggest the absence of a quorum.